Hey y'all, welcome. This is going to be a tour of our chemical and biomolecular engineering department at Clemson University. Uh, I am going to be your tour person for today. So um, as you hear this voice, I am Kenitra Johnson and I am a senior chemical engineering major um, at Clemson. And I am going into my last, well, I'm in my last semester at Clemson, so I'll be graduating in May. Um, so as I talk about some slides, I will definitely insert my experiences and basically anything I've gone through so that way you guys get a very personal experience and also a student perspective um, as we go through the slides. Okay, so exactly what is chemical engineering? Um, pretty much is going to be a mixture of chemistry, biology, physics, and math. Um, there is going to be a heavier emphasis within chemistry and math um, simply because we're chemical engineering. So we love um, all molecules and particles and really studying those things that really see how it affects your overall process. Um, so the best way to kind of condense down what chemical engineering is um, in a big picture is going to be that we look at the chemistry of any type of properties, any chemicals, and really seeing exactly how do they affect, uh, affect an overall process. So just looking at some careers in chemical engineering. So the first one is going to be energy. This one is um, first simply because this one is probably the most well-known one, especially for chemical um, engineers. So of course, people love dealing with energy. That's something that we always need, and that makes the whole world go around. Um, so that is a top one that most chemical engineers like to go into. But we also have um, a couple other ones that I'm going to go into as well. So in terms of commodity and specialty chemicals, so a little insert about me is that with my degree, I plan on hopefully doing something um, involved with makeup. So that's going to go under this category because, of course, um, anything that you're going to be putting on your face or your body, you want to make sure um, that you look at a process and make sure that things aren't getting contaminated. So um, this is also an up, up and coming area um, as well for chemical engineers. Biotechnology, a lot of our professors in our department love biotechnology. A lot of things in your body um, actually function on the same level that we kind of study in terms of chemical engineering. So a lot of processes that we look at in textbooks, actually a lot of those things go on within your body. So biotechnology is something that we're very much heavily involved in. Um, and a lot of our professors also look into this area as well. Then we have pharmaceuticals. So uh, another thing people want to do is go to pharmacy school. So after you graduate with your chemical engineering degree, pharmaceuticals is definitely another option for you to look into. Um, and once again, you're looking at chemistry that's involved in it. So even though we're talking about engineering, we also have a very strong background in chemistry that helps you if you would like to pursue pharmaceuticals. Electronic and advanced materials. So once again, um, I did talk about materials in the last slide. So that's something that you always can look into. And then electronics that has a little bit of chemical engineering in there. So that is a field that you also can look into um, if you want to get a degree in chemical engineering. Environmental sustainability. So um, this is actually something I found out more about after doing an internship. Um, a lot of people are wanting to go into this simply because, of course, any process that you have is going to have some type of waste or you have to have air treatment with the process. So with this, you're going to be able to say whatever waste comes out of a process, how do you deal with it responsibly and make sure it doesn't hurt the environment? So that's super important nowadays, um, especially with everything being manufactured on a large scale, you want to make sure that the environment is safe at all times. And then food, of course, anything that we're putting into our bodies, and we love good food all the time, good snacks, especially me, I love desserts. Um, food is just an area where you have to be safe about, once again, contaminations and making sure um, that food is processed safely, um, especially at those large scales where people have to ship out food, um, then that's something that we also look at. Okay, so our department, so if you've ever been on our campus, um, most people, if you have been on our campus, it may have been for a football game. Um, so from Death Valley, we are pretty much uh, up the hill from there. So not too far, I think probably about a quarter of a mile up from Death Valley. And we're kind of at the corner of campus and our building is Earl Hall. So a lot of our classes are taken there. Usually after you finish up your freshman year, you may have classes kind of scattered out on campus. Um, but mostly once you get into your chemical engineering major starting around your sophomore year, you will have the majority of your classes in there. Um, a lot of our undergraduate students spend time in there, um, especially before COVID. We would um, definitely have groups in there, homework groups, working on stuff together. Um, professors definitely have open door policies when they are on campus. Um, and definitely there, if you need anything, you're able to go into the office um, and talk to anybody about any problems you're having in class or if you can't understand material. 
Um, so we're not very big at all. So in Earl Hall, we only have about 274 um, undergraduates altogether. So this isn't including our freshman um, students. So they do have to take an introduction class to chemical engineering. However, they aren't included in it just yet until they finish up that first introduction class, which is taken in the last half of your freshman year. And then we also have 63 graduate students as well. So like I said before, they do help out with our professors. Um, so they're always doing their research as well and then assisting anyone, um, especially our professors. And then with a 20 faculty and staff, a lot of our faculty and staff are very knowledgeable about all classes. Some of them have cross teach classes, meaning that they've teach multiple different classes, depending on where the need is. Our faculty um, definitely just helps out wherever they need to. So they're very knowledgeable. Most of them, you can ask them um, questions about different classes that they may um, have not taught yet, but they just know a lot of information. So, and also um, a good bit of our faculty also has some type of industry background. So that also comes in handy for certain classes as well. Um, so we have a very um, good group of faculty that we have. And ultimately our department aspires to have an environment of diversity and inclusion. So we wanna make sure all students feel um, included. We wanna make sure we have all races, everyone who has a different perspective. We like making sure that our chemical engineering department um, is gonna be someone that celebrates any uniqueness of our students. And we're open to having any of that in our department. And we definitely value that. Okay, now in terms of our curriculum, so you're kind of probably thinking about how did, our, um, how did the classes look? What class am I gonna be taking? Um, and kind of like your workload over the next four years. Um, so ultimately it's gonna be a bunch of principles in science and engineering, and then of course, um, some communication skills. So that's gonna mostly come in with your general education classes. Um, your freshman year, you're really just gonna be taking very basic um, classes. So freshman year is mostly um, general classes that all engineering majors at Columbus will be taken. So that's really just going to be like your physics, your chemistries, um, and then of course some calculus classes that you're going to be starting to take as well. Um, and then like I was saying before, with your freshman year during the spring, it'll be actually an introduction to chemical engineering class. So whereas most of your other engineering peers may be taking a different course, you will be taking a specific class for chemical engineering. Um, a lot of students find that to be helpful, so that way you really get an understanding of what chemical engineering is, so that way um, you have a better idea if that's something that you really want to do before you get fully into it during your sophomore year, so a very good way of doing that as well. So it's not until your sophomore year is where you actually start building up um, the chemical engineering classes, so most of the time you're going to be taking between uh, two to four uh, chemical engineering classes throughout your four years per semester. Um, but your sophomore year is really just going to be your basic tools that you're going to be having for chemical engineering. So um, just a couple of mass and energy balances. So just stuff like that, just to kind of see the ins and outs of a process, understanding that mass has to be conserved um, and anything that enters the system must leave a system somehow. So really just understanding those basic things is going to be fundamental um, for your sophomore year. Now going into your junior year, this one um, is where stuff really gets super important now because as your junior year approaches, you're taking um, more classes. So a lot of these classes are built off of the sophomore year classes. So um, you might be taking part one during your sophomore year and then you have a part two during your junior year. So it kind of builds upon what you learned in sophomore year. It kind of goes a little bit deeper into things. Um, definitely more heavy calculations for you to understand. Um, and then the most important thing about junior year is gonna be during your spring semester of junior year. That's where you're gonna start taking a class called unit operations. In terms of unit operations, that's gonna be one of the major classes where you learned a whole lot of lessons about um, actually working processes. So in these pictures, both um, on the sides of these words right here on the slide, um, these are some of our undergraduate students that are doing a unit operations lab. Ultimately, this class is really to take everything that you've built during sophomore and junior year. So anything that you've pretty much talked about, they're gonna be applying it in the lab. Uh, we have pilot scale machinery inside of our lab. So basically it's not like the full scale machines, but they do the same exact operations. You work them the same exact way. They're just a little bit smaller. So that way, of course, it's not like giant machines. Um, and this lab is also located um, on, an, I think the second to last floor in Earl Hall. Um, so with these labs, you're able to learn how to work the machinery. You're able um, to basically get an objective from your professor. They tell you exactly what you need to do, what kind of data you need to get, and kind of what your goal is, why you're going to be working the process. 
um, while you're doing that, you're going to actually run the system, you're going to collect the data, you're going to analyze the data, and you're really going to decide, um, you know, some different things about how your data comes out. If it doesn't come out perfect, that's probably going to be the case most of the time because nothing comes out perfect. Um, but it's a great way to actually start applying what you learned in class, even though it's nothing but calculations, you actually start seeing what makes a difference in a process and what can you change about a process um, to either improve it or what made a difference in your data. So now I'm going into senior year. Um, with senior year, once again, is kind of a building upon the same sophomore and junior year classes, but it's going to be more of the emphasis on what you learned during your junior year. Um, during junior year, excuse me, during senior year, you're really just going to be learning, um, of course, safety because you're about to go out into the industry. So you need to know about safety, super important. Um, and then, of course, you're going to be taking a second part of the unit operations class. So that's once again going to entail the same exact thing and that is just going to be slightly different systems um, and you're going to do basically the same process of getting a goal, having to actually set up a procedure on how to run the machine, you actually run the pilot scale machinery as well, and then you analyze the data again. So basically the same exact thing from junior year, but now you're kind of just using um, a different skill set because you've taken part one before and then also um, it's just going to build upon the junior year experiences as well. So a lot of team building experiences go on within your senior year because it's a lot of group based projects. Okay, so now I'm going to explain exactly what an emphasis area is. So basically emphasis area is basically a smaller version of a minor. Uh, so either you can take a minor um, and that will be perfectly fine, but an emphasis area is going to require a little less credits than a minor. Um, so typically, I think that average is about three to four classes for an emphasis area. Okay, so the fun part is going to be talking about co-ops and internships. Um, this is probably one of my favorite things to talk about because people always want to know, you know, is it different? Is it just like, you know, the stuff that you learn in class? What, like, why would you want to get an internship or a co-op? Um, so the biggest thing you want to get from these is that you have experience. So even though you're learning a whole lot of things in class, being able to apply it and being able to also just learn how the workforce is and kind of what they expect of you is what you really get out of doing one of these um, educational enrichments. So that's the most important thing is it's not just like the classroom, but you learn so much more outside of it and how to apply your degree a whole lot better. I'm going to explain the co-op program. So that's going to be something you can go through our Michelin Career Center for. Um, so we are number one in the Princeton Review and that was from 2016 and we're still a very much top contender even up until this day. Um, basically, our career center is going to be focused on helping you start up that co-op process. So a co-op co is basically you're going to spend at least three semesters with a company. So once you go to the career center, uh, they help you in terms of picking companies that you potentially want to, you know, work for, and then also help you kind of get your resume together, um, prepare you for interviews with these companies. And once you interview with companies, um, they can give you offers as to doing a co-op. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about internships because that's more of my area since I didn't want to do a co-op. Um, and that's just more because co-ops, you know, you spend it with one company. And for me, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do manufacturing or research and development. So not knowing which route I wanted to go into, I wanted to make sure I was able to have that flexibility to, you know, kind of dibble and dabble with different companies. Um, so as you can see on here, we have a couple of places already on here, um, GE and then Exxon, Millikan. Um, Millikan is the one where I did my first internship with, and that was more the manufacturing route. Um, for me, that was a really good experience because I love being on the floor with operators. I love talking to them, um, really getting to kind of nitpick at that brain and kind of see what they know. Because a lot of the operators, they are so knowledgeable. A lot of them have been there for many, many years. Um, and they know the process like the back of their hands. So that's why I love talking to operators. Um, and that's what I loved most at Millikan. So I worked a lot with some prior retardant fabrics and dyeing um, the fabrics within these huge dye jets who are at least um, 13 feet most of the time, if not longer than that. Um, so working with those um, definitely gave me like a good experience overall. And then they also have very um, local areas where you can work. So when I did my internship, it was actually in Pendleton and that's about 10 minutes from Clemson. And then you also, um, a lot of my other classmates went to their location in Spartanburg where their headquarters are. So that's also um, a very good advantage to work with Millikan as well. Um, so it's definitely different options like we talked about before. Um, when you get chemical engineering degree, you have those many options of what you can do. So that was my experience with internships, but ultimately you can do them um, 
even starting after your freshman year. So you have about three summers where you can kind of have that opportunity to have an internship, try different companies. Um, a lot of times, even once you do an internship, they will offer to have you back next summer. So that's not a big concern. If you want to stay with them, you do a good job, put in the work, you definitely have an offer. And then even after my SC Johnson um, internship that I had, then I was also offered something as well. So it's always possible. Okay, so we're just going to look a little bit more into research because this is something that's really big in our department. So our professors love research. A lot of them um, actually decide to do research. Um, so it's not too many staff members in our department that does not do some type of research. So they're very passionate about it. So about 58% of our undergraduates participate in research, meaning that there are a lot of opportunities. Most people, even if you just want to try out research and you have no idea, um, it's definitely a place for you to at least try it in our department. Like I said, professors, you know, all across the board are definitely doing it. So you have opportunities. Um, it's not something very competitive that you have to go through. It's not a formal application. Most of the time, if you go to a professor and you ask them, what do they focus on in their research? You know, if they have any spots for undergraduates, which most of the time they have spots there. Um, and you work closely with the graduate students as well. So you just basically have to ask them, see if it's something that you're interested in doing, and that way you can kind of put your foot in the door in terms of doing undergraduate research. So if you guys are interested in getting involved, because we always want to make sure that you have the opportunity to, you know, get involved in other things. Yes, you're an engineer, but you also have a life outside of it, and you also want to just get to know the people um, that, you know, either you go to class with or people, you know, that are in campus. So here's one option of saying you can join the AKI chapter. Um, so with AKI, this is a, basically a place where all of our chemical engineers love um, to be able to congregate with each other, fellowship, and then, and then our president, Alton, that's going to be listed on here. So if that's something you're interested in, as soon as you get to campus and you just kind of want to see what they're doing, he's also a good resource for you. So another way you can get involved is with our Novache chapter. So this is going to be the National Organization for the Professional Advancement of Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers. Um, so this is just another organization where you get to see minorities that love chemistry all together, basically. So we have chemists, chemical engineers. Um, it doesn't have to always be chemists. It can always be chemistry related as well. So even if you decide not to join the chemical engineering train, um, this is still an opportunity for you to get involved in an organization that, you know, definitely values the, uh, the perspective that minorities are bringing to the engineering field and then also the science field in general. And then we also have the SHIP chapter. So that's also going to be another minority-based one. It's going to be for our Hispanic professional engineers. Um, all these people, I know some of them even as mentors, they do a whole lot of work in the community. But basically, you don't have to identify as Hispanic or Latina uh, or Latino to join. You just basically have to, you know, just be willing to want to see other minorities do great. So very good people within this. And then, of course, their basis is going to be professional development, personal growth, and then strengthening leadership skills. So once you get out into the workforce, you know how to lead your team in the right direction. Um, and ultimately, for them, they feel like they're a ship family. Um, so that I think they definitely create that environment within their organization, and that's something that they do as well. Okay, so studying abroad. So um, currently, our department does offer study abroad. So a lot of people aren't really sure if you can do this within the curriculum if you do decide to do a study abroad. Um, however, we kind of have it worked into our curriculum if you want to do it. So um, if this is appealing to you to go to Denmark, then that's an option. Uh, usually unit operations two is taken during the fall part of your senior year. However, you can take it during the summer before your senior year, um, and it's going to be a four-week program. So it's basically going to be the same uh, stuff that you pretty much learn uh, if you're at Clemson, but it's just going to basically be at a different facility that has, you know, super cool research um, stuff. They also have machinery there. So they're still getting the same experience, but of course, in a different country, um, very good experience for people. And then if you don't want to do something based on the curriculum, you can always do Engineers Without Borders. Um, and then if you really want to do anything else outside of that, you can always go through CCAS to figure out what else may work best for you. Okay, so these are our department contacts. Um, so, of course, Dr. Ogle, he is actually one of our professors, but he's also the undergraduate program coordinator. 
And then people who you probably will want to get to know very, very good is going to be um, Miss Joy and then Caitlin. These are going to be your um, people to contact in terms of anything student related. Um, honestly, they probably can answer any of your questions uh, if you have any about the program. And then also me at the end, I'm going to be your student ambassador. So um, also definitely reach out to me if you have any further questions. I would love to elaborate more if you guys have any um, deeper questions or more about my experiences. And I am um, so glad that you guys decided to join in and tune in and watching us. Um, and please let us know if we can help you any further with making your decision for our chemical engineering department. Thank you. Thank you.